Hello YouTube. Today we're going to be taking a look at this Advantest R6871E-DC digital multimeter. Um, this is a six and a half digit meter. It's got seven and a half digit uh, overranging. Unfortunately, because it's the DC suffix on here, the, the one without the suffix has more functionality. This one's only got voltage DC and two wire and four wire ohms. There's no AC uh, and there's no current measurement, even though it just says DC there. The, the, the one without the DC suffix does include true RMS AC as well as um, the current measurement and I believe there are a couple other functions that are different on that one as well. The reason I wanted to do a video about this meter is because I had a real hard time finding any information on it which made it tough to pull the trigger. I did get it quite cheaply but it's still I don't like buying equipment when I can't find out what the specifications are or how to use it. Um, so I had a hard time and I ended up buying it before I found a manual which I did end up finding but uh, I was able to find the specifications for it which were quite good. Um, if we take a quick look here at the spec sheet that I printed out this is just the basic DC accuracy and this is the 24 hour um, time scale here so you can see that 0.0015 percent on most ranges a little better on the 20 volt basic range um, for the long averaging times. That, that is actually quite good. It's uh, quite a bit better than the Fluke 8846 which is a modern um, meter you can buy today. So uh, the specifications are one thing. It seems to be quite good. Now one of the things that I didn't notice when I purchased this uh, from the photos it seemed to me that uh, this would probably be about the same size and depth as uh, say an Agilent E3610 uh, power supply which in actual fact is is more about this kind of size compared to this meter so this beast is actually quite large and that's why we're up in my kitchen today um, I just don't have space on my bench there's too much junk there to clean up to even just fit this thing for a quick look and no chance of doing a teardown which I'd like to do um, for you guys in the next couple of days I really want to get more information about this meter out there so uh, you other guys can take advantage of it. Now this meter didn't seem to be too popular in North America I think that's probably why I had a hard time finding information but I, I do see them fairly regularly pop up on eBay um, so maybe you can get yourself one um, cheap like I did. So as I said at the start this is a six and a half digit meter it's got seven and a half digit over range which as you can see now we've actually got six digits showing here even though um, this is a it's a twenty million sorry two million count with 20 million count over ranging so it's bumped down a range um, to measure this 5 volts and for that reason we're only seeing six and a half digits right now. Now if I hook up this lead acid battery that I've got here we can see that it can actually measure seven and a half digits even though this is a six and a half digit meter. So that's kind of an interesting feature I don't know that there are other meters that do that I know that some of the modern ones will have much more accurate readings available over GPIB but I like that this one does give the full seven and a half digits even if there's no improvement in accuracy or additional confidence in those last values you can enable smoothing um, which will average up to I believe it's a hundred maximum readings and that's a rolling average so you're basically uh, just improving the accuracy of the display and decreasing the update speed um, but that I think you can probably pull another digit of accuracy out by using that averaging if you've got a good stable signal. So that's kind of interesting. As far as the user interface it's a little bit weird um, not exactly well designed or easy to use and I did have to spend some time reading the manual to figure things out even just basic functionality. Um, for example there are a lot of abbreviations on the buttons which you might be able to guess at what they are but uh, really you need to get a copy of the manual to figure this thing out. I'll go over a couple of the basics. It's got an integration time you can set, that's IT. Um, it goes in steps, so you can also see that there are numbers printed beside each of these digits. Now for some functions you need to use those to enter in the values. For other functions um, they, aren't, they don't work. So for example you don't set out an arbitrary um, integration time. You need to use this change button down here to select between the multiple values. One thing I do really like about this meter is this little dot, dot matrix LED display. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this uh, on another device but it, it's quite nice and it, it uh, allows proper display of the units and it's very clear and easy to use so I do actually quite like the display on this meter. It's easy to read and um, LED backlit so it works in any lighting condition really well and any viewing angle so um, that's one thing that's pretty good. So, as I was saying, integration time, 
um, you can set that way. Now there are also these other functions that have blue backlit text. Now let me zoom in here so you can have a look at that. So for example, this button here that I was, <laughs> doesn't like that, um, this button here that I was just trying, just pressing on to change the integration time says res underneath it, and that's for resolution. So um, you need to press the blue shift and then the integration time, don't press them together, and you can get the resolution up here. So here's where we change this to a four, five, six, or seven digit meter. Um, so if I go to, a, let's say a four digit meter, we just get really quick updates and very, very low resolution, or we can change back to our full seven digits um, to bring that uh, seven digit mode up. Now, there are actually some fairly advanced capabilities in this meter. It's got a lot of computational functions. Now, the problem with these is that to modify them, of course, you go to blue and then CF. Oops, that's the wrong button. Blue and CF. And here you need to basically memorize a table of um, different functions. I believe this one is percent offset and then you can set a value in a different spot. I don't recall exactly where that goes. That's, I believe, this x, y, z here. You can set variables which apply to the computation functions, but they're all numbered, and you basically have to, you can't do it without the manual. It can do RMS calculation of the readings that come in. It can do averaging. It can do um, pass-fail, which is what this high-low function is here, and it's got a buzzer as well, so you can have it buzz um, if the reading is a fail, which can be, uh, I guess, quite useful maybe for sorting resistors or, um, you know, checking the tolerance of items. You just measure it and it'll buzz and tell you if it's good or not. Um, so maybe that's useful. Um, it does have data storage as well. I believe it stores 10, up to 10,000 values in the uh, first in, first out um, sort of way. So if I just press store here, we're now storing data. Um, if I press it again, it will stop storing. Now, I can recall these values, and this is something that's really quirky with this user interface. Um, it's really quite poor, but basically if I press recall here, it will tell me I have 81 memory readings that were stored during that time. Um, to actually get the readings, you need to press this blue button first, and it says no, I guess that means number, and then you press the, the digit of the number that you want to look at. So I want to look at the first reading, press 1, and then press change. Oh, sorry, maybe it's enter. Yes, enter, sorry. Um, now you're looking at that stored reading, and now you can press these up and down buttons here to scroll through them. Um, if you want to look at an individual reading, or want to know what reading you're looking at, you can press change and that will show you the number. Now, once you're in this mode, I don't, maybe there's a way, but I can't find a way to enter the number again. Um, so to do that, you have to go back, press recall, press this, enter the number, and then go on your way. So that's kind of awkward. It's actually very awkward. Um, but of course that data is available by GPIB, and I believe there's actually a way that you can play it back with a particular interval between the values so they'll actually play back on the display um, but I'm not uh, not so sure about that part the other thing is that it can be placed into a multi trigger mode here where basically what it does is every time you press the trigger button it will store um, the, the value that it reads so if I go to store here we're now ready to store data and I can say measure my resistor press trigger and <laughs> <laughs> I might be wrong about that because I've got a lot of readings happening here. Um, let's stop that. Yeah, I've got a lot of readings in multi-mode there, so let's try single mode. Yes, I'm sorry. So the single mode, you can place it into single mode, put on the data storage function, and then each time you press trigger, it will take a reading and store it in the memory. So now if I go to recall, I just stored four values and of course I can look through those in the same fashion that I did before. I believe that you can also apply the computation function, so for example the averaging or RMS, um, it might even do standard deviation and some other statistics I believe are available in here. So this could be quite useful actually if you're trying to measure um, components. Um, you know, I remember Dave Jones did a video where he was measuring hundreds of resistors to try and figure out what the curve on them was, and this could be um, pretty good for that. You can just hit trigger, trigger, trigger whenever you're ready, and you don't need to worry about um, an auto mode actually latching onto the value. So that's uh, kind of cool. 
Uh, I'm not sure what this multi-mode is about. I think that this might be related to this end down here where you can set um, a number of values and oh, let's get out of that and let's get into there and n. So maybe I can, if I set this to one, yeah. Anyways, so it's a little bit quirky. There are numbers printed beside these, which is also a bit weird. It goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then zero is way up here. Um, but you can't in this particular um, entry. You need to press change, which changes the value and cycles through the options that are available to you. So I'll set this to 100 power line cycles, which is the longest integration time. And as you can see, it takes quite a while to take a measurement. Um, it's probably the first measurement takes a long time as it auto zeros. And then you get a measurement about once every two to three seconds on this mode. Um, but one thing that bugs me is that if you try and basically do any input, even changing to ohms mode or um, trying to pull up one of the options, for example, if we try and get the integration time back, uh, if we try and get the integration time back, if we try and get the integration time back while it's in the middle of a measurement, for example, there's usually a delay of a second to a couple seconds. It basically seems to wait until the measurement's complete before it shows you the measurement, which when you've got these long integration times, that can be a little bit annoying. Um, other than that, though, uh, the interface is quirky, but the manual is fairly comprehensive and you can figure out how to use it. But, however, I have been uh, quite happy with the performance of it. It seems to work very well. It seems to be very stable. I've had it for a few months now, and uh, most of the time when I'm not using it, I have it on a reference that I keep powered up all the time. Uh, not this DMM check here, but another 5 volt reference that I built. And uh, that value seems very stable, um, down to, you know, like this digit, or this digit. Um, changes by one or two points, you know, over time and over temperature. Very little variation, so I don't have a lot of confidence in that reference, but it does give me, combined with the, co the measurement uh, being very stable on the meter, it gives me quite a bit of confidence, confidence that both um, devices are, are performing reasonably well. So, um, that's basically all that I have to go over with this meter. Uh, I have been pretty pretty happy with it, and for the price that I got it for, I don't know how often they're going to come up at that price again, but um, definitely a worthwhile purchase. Um, just a couple other quick things. It does have, of course, HPIB or GPIB, um, so you can do that to get your data out. Um, they claim that it can take quite a lot of readings per second. I think that they claim it takes 50 readings per second, might have been 500 readings per second, 500 readings per second on um, four digit mode. So um, that could be pretty useful, but I believe you have to use the GPIB interface to do that. I don't think the storage is up to that. At least I haven't been able to get that kind of performance out of the storage. Um, my biggest complaint I think about this meter is the user interface and having to constantly consult the manual. It is a complicated instrument and I don't mind that they um, include a ton of functionality that's really awesome. It's just the, the menu is a little bit obscure. <laughs> the lack of menus make it a little bit obscure and difficult to use. So um, it could be a little better, but I think again, you're you're paying a little bit less money and you have to spend a little bit more time to learn it. So that's fine. It's a complex instrument and it seems to work well. Um, some other interesting stuff. It's got a guard terminal, uh, which is kind of nice, and you can automatically short it to ground. Uh, if you wanted to do that with this button here. It's got rear and front terminals, so we'll come around and uh, take a quick look at the at the back of the uh, instrument and just give you a quick look back there so you know what you're facing. Okay, so not a lot of light back here. I hope that uh, you can see that well enough. Um, just a quick look here, we've got trigger and complete outputs. Um, so this is obviously an input, completes an output when the measurement's complete. A cal protection switch, HPIB interface, we've got a fuse here ground terminal, and then alternate measurement terminals um, here. Now this input, I believe, is just for the amps input if that was the um, non-DC version of this meter. So I'm hoping to do a teardown on this. It is, as you can see over there, just after midnight, and it is a work night tonight, so I won't be doing that today, but uh, maybe tomorrow I will get to a teardown. So I hope that you enjoyed this quick look at the R6871E-DC from Advantest. 
Um, I think I can recommend this. I mean, I wouldn't buy it if I was buying it uh, for the new price, but considering it's, you know, 20, 20 years old or so and can be had quite cheaply, I think it's a pretty good value if you get a good price on it. So, uh, hopefully you enjoyed that, and I will see you guys back, uh, hopefully in a couple days for the teardown.